that's that's oh, that's us. And that that's is you, and that's us. Me. And there, and we're everywhere. What's up, guys? Welcome to Peach Basement Show. Uh, this is our very first live broadcast, so bear with us if we say anything stupid. Me and the big guy, as usual, you know Demetrius, and I want to give a big welcome to Tom Walker, who played Francis on Daredevil Brother. Thanks for being on the program. That's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. That's the statement that everyone says, but I am very grateful. <laughs> I would love having you on. Uh, first of all, you told me you're a comic book fan to start with, so... Obviously, this Daredevil thing must have been like a dream come true for you. <clears throat> Very much so. Uh, that's like where the whole two worlds meet. Um, it's hard to eat, process even still, like because you know I grew up reading them. Uh, they were my friends because I moved around a lot, so I always delved into you know comics. And when you become part of the MCU in your adult life as an actor, there's like you know I could cry getting too deep into it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty. It's like a dream come true in every sense of the word. So yeah, it's awesome. So obviously, any mm. kind of information about season two and the goings <laughs> on is pretty much off limits, off the table. So we just let you guys know that now. Uh, the man is not allowed to answer any questions, and I unfortunately am out of both Rufinol oh. and Truth Serum. Wait, wait, I, 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 I can answer <laughs> questions about Daredevil season two though. You can answer questions. Go ahead. Yeah, what sort of questions can you answer? That's a good question. I can answer that, that in all, itself was a question. All, all, all sorts of questions. <laughs> Maybe not truthfully, but I will definitely okay, give well, an that, answer. There we go. Uh, well, all I can say about that is that, you know, as much as it was received, as well as it was received for season one, I can only imagine that season two will, will be very pleasing to fans and people who just kind of stumbled upon it on Netflix and things like that. Uh, we knew it was going to be good. I don't think anybody knew it was going to be this good. So I can only say season two will probably be... Off the charts. Uh, can I spoil the season finale season two for you guys? Sure. You guys want to hear it? Yeah, let's let <laughs> go let ahead. Right, let's let's hear it. Yeah. All right. It ends with they cure Matt Murdock's visual disability. All right, boo. The end. Yeah, great. No more Daredevil. <laughs> well, no, he's still he's still Daredevil. He's now. But that's not he, the same. Didn't that shit happen in the comics one time? They gave him his sight back. Actually, I, yeah. I don't remember that at uh, all. They man. did that. Yes, Kevin Smith. I believe, oh, if I'm remembering no. correctly. So I, I, I just, I remember reading. Am I correct this. in that one? Kevin Smith's run Marvel Knights with Joe Quesada. They'll tell you for sure. I don't remember <laughs> if. Uh, <laughs> Good one. I remember the Kevin Smith one being about the stolen baby with Mysterio. Yes, absolutely. I but I thought there was a point in which he got his sight back. I could be wrong. And it, like, I could be messed very up wrong. his powers and everything. Because yeah. it just. Iron Man. I remember, oh yeah, that's right. Superior Iron Man the cured. Yeah, he cured him, right? Maybe that's what because I, I read that, that recently. Yes. I think maybe that's what I was thinking of. I just read that, so I think that's. Maybe. I didn't finish reading that story. I, I just remember Kevin Smith killed off Karen Page. That's the one thing I remember. Uh, yes, he did. That was spoiler yeah. alert. Yes, if you haven't read that series, he did. Kill I mean, Karen. that was years ago. One. A, this yeah. is going like 15 years back. I don't yeah. think that even counts as a spoiler anymore. All right, Kevin. I think I'm sorry because I don't. Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> I think that was Superior Iron Man. I yeah. think if I'm not mistaken, Bullseye did it with Daredevil's Billy Club. Yeah, uh, the, that's the page. Yeah, and she yeah. bled out Just in like, the church plop. and everything. Right in the yeah. chest. Yep, right? yep. That is correct. Kevin. I have to tell you, and uh, a couple of our fans, a uh, buddy Mikey Sutton was like, "How did you guys not find this? Uh, the church that Matt was in front of." Is right here in the neighborhood. It's only you know maybe a oh, mile right? away as the crow flies. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, "How did you guys not do a photo with like you as Matt Murdock and Ramon as the priest?" <laughs> That's a good idea. And I mean, it's still on the table. I said, it's still right there, and I have not gone yet. Go get but it. But soon, I promise. Soon we'll just visit the church. And Everybody's I will try fine not... in the you know the law office where Nelson and Murdoch is. Mm -hmm. Everyone's fine in that. Claire, if you're listening, she was there recently. She's a, a great friend and. Did an interview with her a couple weeks ago. She went and took some pictures in front of that. It's pretty cool. So how has the fan response <laughs> been for Ramon? I told Ramon to be the kingpin. I told him to fucking cosplay as the kingpin <laughs> months ago. I'm just going to randomly buy a white jacket my fucking size. Well, we have a men's warehouse near my store. Actually. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah. half the time you go to men's warehouse, you buy one, get like two free or some shit. Yeah, you get like multiple colors, <laughs> like battle suit. What is the logo? Like, you like how you feel <laughs> or some shit like that. You're going to like the way you look. That's the one. I uh, guarantee it. <laughs> See? He guarantees it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Men's warehouse. I'm not shaving my head either. They, they, we don't you know, know what though? They sold out of uh, Come on. suits. I went to check myself actually. I wanted to cosplay as Kingpin also, but they sold out of... You? 
Yeah. Hey, or, man, or, or, let or the man live. Or you be sizest about this? <laughs> yeah. I can't just a bit. Uh, there was a great gentleman in London. I was just at the London Film and Comic Con, and there was a great, uh, amazing, authentic costume. And it was almost almost exactly like this. It was a lot more burgundy, so I don't know where he pulled that from. But, oh, my gosh, it was so good. White jacket. He was big, bald dude. It was great. I think I've seen pictures of him. I got to give a yeah. shout-out to my buddy Michael Knight. And, yes, that is his real name. Nice. Hey, wow. Did Mike. that just happen? Like, <laughs> He, who plays a great kingpin. He dresses up as him every Comic-Con. Uh, ho- he'll probably run into you if you guys are at NYCC. He'll uh, definitely find maybe, you. Maybe, yeah. I'm going to be there. I don't know in what capacity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but is, does, how's his Hoff, though? How's his Hasselhoff? I've never seen him do Hasselhoff. Well, I mean, it's just a waste of a good name. Mike, if you're watching this, and I'll probably just post it on your Facebook page after so you do see it. How do you feel about wearing the wig? And, <laughs> you know, we can... We can just get you in the car. We can buy you a little Firebird and <laughs> he shit. Pu- he pulls it up on cue. <laughs> I didn't even... That's like, a, that's like a magic trick. I didn't even yeah, plan yeah. that. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. So, how has the fan response? But what would Pete cosplay as a Comic-Con? Really? You guys didn't know this one? Do you remember the other crime lord known as the Slug? Yes. Yeah, I was first introduced slug. to the slug, slug in Atlantis Attacks. When he lifts oh. up his fat and actually smothers a guy in his belly. So he that's did, what you want to be. He debuted in Spider-Man, no. right? Oh, okay. Spectacular Spider-Man, if I'm mistaken. That's thing. rough. I rock yeah. Tony Stark at yeah. any Comic-Con. That's good. Throw the glasses on. I throw the suit on. I got the little light-up shirt. And let me tell you, it's a different world. I walked up to Greg Horn's booth, and you know he's always like three, four people deep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. And his manager's like, Mr. Stark, right this way. You, you oh, don't have to wait man, online. Awesome. I'm like, yeah, this is good. That gets you places, see? Stark Industries, baby. Shit, man. <laughs> People running up like, Mr. Starks, nice to meet you. Hey, Tony, how are you? Had little, just adorable fangirls. Like, can I give you a hug? And they hand the camera to their friend-zoned buddy over there, and he's just like, oh. And I'm like, sorry, dude, we've all been there. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It, it is a lot of fun. I cosplayed for the very first time last year, and it was so much fun. You Have you ever done it? I haven't, um, but I saw some great stuff in um, in London. There was a guy I was telling you earlier. The the guy in the Paul or David, I believe his name was. He had a great vigilante daredevil suit. It was very authentic, like head to toe. He did his research. He was great. He was really really good. I saw a couple daredevils actually, which was mind blowing and really cool to see. But there was a couple. They were in competition. It's like, well, mine's better, right? I mean, just make sure that this is the best one. Like I won the award. <laughs> I'm like, yes, of course. Yours is the best one. Was his the best one? You know. That's it a damn cool. good accent, by the way. Oh, in fact, I've been there a long time at this point. It's like five <laughs> days straight and everybody talks like this. So it's like, yeah, mate, cheerio. What Some not? fans want to know who you played. Oh, yeah. See, I get that a lot, too. Believe me. Uh, I play Francis, who's head of security for Kingpin, Wilson Fisk. Maybe this will look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I get my face kind of crushed in episode... 12. Twelve, and uh, yeah, right before the end. But I won't exactly. But I won't say what happens post. No spoilers on that. I get I get punched a lot, but let's leave it at that. If you haven't seen it yet, I have very dark brown hair in the show though, so it, it does tend to throw people sometimes. Do, do they let you keep the costumes at all? No. Oh, you can't cosplay as Francis, man. Yeah, in a suit. I mean, it's just a nifty suit. You don't it's, get to keep the suit. I don't get to keep the suit. That sucks. Uh, hey, you know. Was it a good suit? Was it like a nice designer suit? Or yeah, it was just... really good suit. Yeah, everybody from. You know, from Nobu and the Russians to me, we all dressed to Wesley. We dressed great. <laughs> I would be like, yeah, I don't know. Some fan must have broke in and stole it, shoving it in your bag. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, no, but yeah, Francis shows up in episode nine. Uh, that's his first appearance when uh, Daredevil and Fisk face off for the first time. And then he starts to reappear throughout the rest of the season. So just, and you can tell me, shut the fuck up if I have to. But I just want to know, like, since Wesley's dead, does this elevate you in, in the Kingpin's status and his, like, you know, criminal organization? It's a great question. Uh, a lot of people have been really attentive to all those details. And I appreciate it. And uh, how can you not? I think that that is kind of the way the natural fruition looks. Mm. That's about the best I can say right now without, okay. you know, saying more. It, it seems that... Uh, if you see the whole show and you, you get to episode Which, 13, I mean, let's face it, you should have by now. If you, if you haven't by now, I mean, I guess we can talk about it, right? Is that fair? Fuck yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they should have seen it by now. Should have seen it Fans of Pete's show would have already seen it, yeah. okay. but I actually think. So when Vanilla's in the... Uh, vanilla. Vanilla! <laughs> when Vanessa's in the helicopter... Uh, you see how that happened, right? Um, 
I'm like his only point of contact at that point uh, outside of Vanessa. So we'll see what happens. Mm. Uh, right, that's right. You helped her escape. Speaking, speaking of elevation, when are we going to see Stiltman, my favorite Daredevil villain? <laughs> so Daredevil show? funny that you mentioned that. Oh my God, uh, that's great. Um, Thank you. Turk Barrett, that character. You, I mean, that's an amazing Miller moment right there. Yeah. That's a great Frank Miller moment. Yeah, yeah. Still Turk. Yeah, yeah. So how are you dealing with crazy comic book fans? Wonderful. They could be freaking anal. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah monstrously so. So yes. have you dealt with that yet? A little bit. Yeah. Um, is Gabe Athhouse in season two? Who's Gabe Athhouse? I'm Gabe Athhouse. I can't say I know Gabe Athhouse. Uh, even if we did, we gay can't. bathhouse. Get well, yeah. fucking played. Oh, good, good. Did you notice I said gay bathhouse? Like I separated. Okay. Um, Somebody's a big fan of the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were we saying? Um, Tattoos by Keith. That was good, brother. You got us. <laughs> well, you got me because I'm fucking gullible. I'm I was like gay bathhouse. Like, Gay bathhouse. Well, fucking jerks. No, the comic book fans. <laughs> <laughs> it's, That's the fans you have. Good. Man. Listen, good. man. Hey, I'm one. You got me. I'll, t I'll take a drink. He's at least one in, so, uh, you know, not a surprise. Revenge is a bitch, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> comic book fans are great. I'm a comic book fan. For the record, I'm a big comic book fan. I was raised on it. I still, I still read them. So I'm a fan as anybody else. You know, like I said earlier, when those worlds kind of met, as you're an actor going into, like, a Marvel cinematic thing, so, I was concerned, too. You know, I wanted it to be as good as anybody, but, I mean, I was, as a fan... Separating the actor part, I was very happy. So you don't compare Comic Con conventions <laughs> to genocide, <laughs> <laughs> or Genosha? Wait, who, who yeah. yeah. Who was that? Uh, uh, that the, would be Lex uh, Luthor. Lex Luthor yeah. Eisenberg. Eisenberg. Yeah. Right, Jesse right. Eisenberg. No, I don't. I love comic book conventions. I've attended the New York City Comic Con uh, a few times. I love it. You know, yeah. uh, it's exhausting, and I don't. I can't say that I'm like the three day guy. I pick a day and I go mm. nuts. And that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great story. If you'd like to hear it. Absolutely. Um, I was at New York City Comic Con last year, and a couple people have heard this already, some of the fans of Tommy Katz. If you're listening, I love you, you're all amazing. Real quick before I tell the story, I do want to say thank you to Arden Barlow. She is known as Loki Yago on Twitter. She's an incredible artist. She's extremely talented. She can do so many different styles. You should look her up, actually, as Demetrius is a great writer. I'm going to write her something. down, because I have the worst memory in history. <laughs> Arden no. Barlow is a wonderful gal. She's really good, and she has done some amazing fan art of the character Wesley and Francis and in various incarnations. Nice. But she sent me a little care package uh, today at my agents, and I wanted to say thank you for that. Very sweet. And uh, a big shout-out to Jolin, who's running the Tommy Cats. Love you. Thank you. Do we get to know what was in the care package? Was it like, like drawn pictures or anything It was like the that? cutest thing. She works at a comic book shop in Boston, okay. and she sent me Daredevil uh, Marvel Knights number 24, which is drawn by Mac, who's my boy. And uh, it's a great cover. She likes the art. 24 is my Twitter handle, Tommy Walker 24 So it's like a lot of little Easter eggs. I'm a huge Flash fan. She sent me a Flash magnet. It was That's just cool. really sweet stuff. That's, nice. so. That's really cool. Thank you. But real quick, ad nauseum, I'll tell you the story. Uh, at New York City Comic Con last year, uh, my former bass player, Bill, who I love you, uh, in my band Sweet Fix, he was going to go with me. And we went the year before. So it was like a tradition. Mm. And Bill couldn't go last minute. So I said to him, all right, bro, I'll just go by myself. And I went on a Friday. And I had been up for the role of Francis for about a week. And there was a lot of, you know, I guess like... It wasn't a stuff. lock, man? Oh, God. Uh, no, it was just a lot, of, a lot of stuff to take care of. So you, you're waiting for a little while trying to figure it out. And it was kind of a weird existence going because, like I said, I'm a fan. And I go to the con and all I hear about is how the, uh, the main cast is going to come to Comic-Con the next day. The Saturday. I can't remember the exact date. If it was 11th or 12th, something like that, of October. But uh, I kind of walked around all day and I was like, man, this is just so crazy. Like, maybe tomorrow I'm actually going to be part of this cast. Or maybe the next day. Who knows? You know what I mean? It was a weekend. But uh, this was a Friday when I was there. I get through the Comic-Con. I do my shopping and I, I buy some swag. It's an exhausting day. And all I heard all day was Daredevil, 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 Daredevil. So it was on my mind. Nice. I get home. I set my bag down on my desk. Phone rings. You're hired. You got to go to set tonight. Damn. To the That's same a, night, man? To color my hair, yeah. Oh, it was, wow. It was the great, one of the greatest days I've ever had in my life. It was That's cool. pretty That's damn awesome. So did you get to walk around with them then the next day? No, I, did, I didn't go back. I was, okay. I was pretty wrapped up the rest of the weekend, but um, they were all there, and I, I watched it on uh, YouTube. <laughs> and I just kind of sat there at a burger joint going like, holy shit. <laughs> like, you know, you're about to start work. Like, I'm going to be with these this, guys. This was last New York Comic Con? Yeah, last year. 
when when you stop by the store like on Sunday, you're just like looking at Daredevil products, and you were keeping a really like big secret that you couldn't yeah. contain. Yeah, you were like, oh, I can't really talk about much. Yeah, what Daredevil stuff do you have, by the way? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Demetrius is actually responsible for selling me my newest edition of Born Again because I hadn't read it for you know 15, 20 years. So that was cool. A fan yeah. wants to know. How do you think Civil War will affect the Daredevil universe? That's a good question. Uh, In other words, it's a question you can't talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I don't know specifically. I would like it to. As a yeah. fan, I would love it to affect. Well, when does season two air? It will air in 2016. I don't know when. They haven't released an air date. I got, I got a different question. When does Iron Fist air? <sighs> oh, because, when does Iron Fist get cast is a better <laughs> question. Because if you guys remember, Daredevil's role in uh, Civil War... Um, what was it? 2005, I remember Daredevil's role in Civil War. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, Daredevil was already in prison at the time. Actually, there you go. And uh, and kind so he, he, he was That's fighting. Right. <laughs> he was, he, so he was. So he, that was after his identity got outed. His, his, and he was, there you right. go. Very good guy. And they were trying to like leak. Uh, they were trying to like Foggy Nelson was trying to play a case where he's not the same guy. So mm. they had had Iron Fist poses Daredevil right. to fight crime while Matt Murdock was in prison. That's good. Fighting Daredevil, the Owl, all his enemies were in prison. Bullseye, they were all in prison at the same time. And so an interesting thing would it be to like link Iron Fist, Daredevil, Civil War all together, actually. That'd be really interesting. I don't think the like, timing is going to work. Out. Iron Fist probably isn't so due either. out until late 2016 at this point. Is that right? Like, uh, I'm just, I'm just guesstimating be before that. 2000, uh, before Iron Fist? That, without question. Without question, okay. And right. I, I mean, I don't know shit, but mm -hmm. just timetabling it, we'll probably get Jessica Jones around October or yeah, November. Yeah, that's cast, right. Right. That's, Luke yeah. Cage will bounce off of that. Maybe sure. we'll get Luke ha, Cage ha, ha. and Daredevil Jeez. season two around the same time, April-ish. I'm just is, estimating. Is Luke Cage gonna spin off as the character he was in issue one of Alias? Because that'd be pretty <laughs> yes. yes. Are you I'll and everyone else asking that. if she's gonna get blasted in the ass yes, by Luke yes, Cage? Yes. We don't I know. We I don't know. So. I freaking time will tell. <laughs> Time will tell. Um, I'm estimating DD season two comes out around April, which is when it came out last season, you know, this past year. It's, it's funny that the one guy who can't answer that can't answer that. But yeah, he actually can't answer that. I, I honestly don't know. Oh, okay. I honest to goodness don't know. <laughs> Did anyone else want Ant Man to lose the fight he was in mid fight? Mid absolutely. I don't know. What? Yeah. Why? No spoilers for people who didn't see it, but yeah, absolutely. No. There's no way he should have beaten a guy with that kind of military training. Oh, you talking about Falcon? Well, there we go. <laughs> no, fuck that. If you have, okay, what is it? Yeah, like... you don't beat a guy with that kind of military oh, oh, no, training. No, I agree with that. I thought you were talking about Yellow Jacket. I'm like, why no, would no, he not Yellow Jacket? Yeah, like Yellow Jacket wins. No, no, I, dude. The guy who held his own against Winter Soldier, for crying out loud, yeah, should have done a little bit better than, uh, it, it, than what we but saw. But the movie made it seem like he won by luck. Yeah, it yeah, did. and I think so. that that was that was the cute part about it, and the, the great line was, "Please don't let Cap know about this," <laughs> yeah. and that's what makes it so fun. It's like a guy who shouldn't lose lost, and he's like, "Oh, it's so embarrassing." I think that that's cute. Yeah, mm, it's good stuff. I, I, I just. For me personally, <laughs> especially since he's the new Captain America, uh -huh. I really don't like that they put the weakest Avenger Falcon against Ant-Man to like put Ant-Man over. Do you mean they put the weakest Avenger, or do you mean they put the guy with the smallest paycheck to be in the movie? <laughs> Fine. It's like, we can afford you, get in the movie. I, Anthony, I would you like to do it? I, I feel like Ant-Man would have kicked uh, uh, Scarlet Witch's butt, and I actually even think he would have been able to kick Vision's butt. He would have he, he like, done different things. Ooh, think he could have kicked Vision's in? Oh, that's yeah. a stretch. I don't know you about so? that. Vision's no, naive, one. man. And, and Vision basically beat Ultron. I mean, come yeah. on. But he beat him by talking to him, man. Ant-Man <laughs> was a shyster, man. He was a shyster. He, 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 like, he wouldn't fall sway to like Vision's naive, uh, uh, you know, whatever dialogue, man. All right, all right. That's, that's my opinion. Guys, for the record, there's a fucking mosquito flying around here. So if you see us randomly do this, we can get him. We can kill him, I know it. Anybody see Easter Egg when Ant-Man went subatomic? I've heard. What is None of I've heard. Easter egg there. All right. I, I'm swinging some Sorry about the spoilers, guys. We'll just throw them out there. <laughs> cover your ears if you didn't if what you didn't Easter see egg, the movie yeah. yet. Turn off your periscope and come back. Do you back remember in five minutes? when Michael Douglas was saying if the regulator breaks, you're going to shrink for eternity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eternity. Yeah, yeah. Eternity. Yeah. Echoes does yeah. that little reverb thing. Supposedly, there was eternity. Somewhere within the microverse. Didn't see him, Didn't see him either. Am I, I'm Might have to see the movie again to see this. Yeah, yeah I, I can't say I saw it. 
Did anyone notice the shadow of the original walk on the chair after Pim got up? No. No, I don't know. How is it spoiling? When, uh, uh, because well, I don't know. it's only been out for like it's only been out for a week. Yeah, now. less than a week. So wait, what shadow? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Not what? sure what that meant. What oh, wasp? About? No. No. No, I didn't see that. But you know, I, I, it they did, they did that right she could be wasp. alive as I, well. Oh, okay, that's cool. I got I got a question for the fans. Have you fans noticed the wasp in this area in this scene at all? No, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real, literal wasp. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna let Cobra Kai over here grab it next time it comes around. Daniel son. That's actually that's a question I wouldn't mind asking as, as someone who's been in martial arts for a while. Do, do you actually have the training to have beaten the shit out of the kingpin? It's like you weren't nervous he was gonna kill you or have his boys all kill you. You mean me or Francis? No, what you personally? Uh, no, I took karate for years as a kid, so I have some, um, and I do a lot of my own stunts uh, when That's applicable. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean, of course, when when uh, Vincent and I were doing the, you know, that mm. we had stunt guys to help us, obviously for safety reasons, and they they subbed us in and out, but we rocked that thing, he and I. So we know it. I mean, he was good too. He's very um, careful. He had a lot of his own fighting that he did. Mm. He was great, very hands on. He was uh, fearless, and Chris Brewster, who was uh, Charlie Cox's stunt double, I mean, he's like so great to watch. He, I mean, you know, he's ten feet away from this guy. He's doing like spinning wheel kicks and landing on his feet. It's just like shit. He's phenomenal. He's a great. Stuff. He's the greatest guy. All right. That guy got a supporting actor nomination, huh? Yeah, yeah, Vincent yeah. The E.W.W.Y. absolutely ones. deserved it, man. He did. I think he got snubbed at the Emmys. Actually, that sucks. I think that's people right. were a little fearful to nominate a Netflix I, superhero I, I, I show. Totally as, if, as if a superhero show wasn't bad enough, and now it's on Netflix and not even like and a real movie. Or exactly, like that. and it's not even. It's a, it's a crime drama in every sense of the word. Do we get we it? Got it. We got him. Yeah. He's somewhere. Who got it? There he is. Who got it? He's done That's the question. Who got it? Did you I don't see know. that? You guys killed Janet Van Dyne. It's called teamwork. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny and Daniel right here have come together. <laughs> United as one. A fan wants that to worked. know, will we see more like law and order type of stuff on Daredevil? Law and order type you of just, stuff? Just courtroom drama type thing. I think it's possible. I think that they did a lot of um, really cool patient scenes with Matt in the court, being a lawyer. As you know, like, so many great scenes have been written in the comic books of him actually doing defense. Yeah. Um, for goodness sake. It'll be great to see him, like, win a case or two. Yeah, like, I think that we're gonna see, that's a great question, the more I think about it, thank you. I would love to see that, I think that our, would be great writing. Our fans want you to arm wrestle, and whoever loses <laughs> eats the bug. The, bug, the uh, bug's already bug actually on the floor though. already. One will never know. Oh. The bug's the on the floor. But I mean, look at the size of this guy. The... What are you talking about? Mm. Oh, it's gonna be like that now? <laughs> I, I didn't buy my ticket to the gun show. <laughs> can, can I say something real quickly? Uh, these guys have each been customers at the store, and they just never showed up at the same time <laughs> at all. Like, Pete shows up generally around the afternoons, and, uh, Early uh, evening after work, unless I got, unless it's a work. slow day. Yeah, mostly after work. And then Tommy shows up later than that, actually, most of the time. And uh, you guys never, you know, <laughs> yeah. you guys go, you guys occupy the same space, but never at the same time, man. I try to just kind of slip in and out of there, yes. you know, like I try not to spend too much time in there. Like I, I, tr I tried to too, but I'm on a schedule. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Even I feel like if I stay there too long, I'll get stuck, you know, I'll wind up <laughs> buying too much shit, or you know what I mean? And Chris Craddock also, yeah, you, you never interacted with him. But you, you brought him here for the first time. Never met him before mm. in my this, life. This is another customer. Again, Occupy Same Space. This guy is a rocket scientist. He's actually funded the... Uh, he, they're building a rocket ship to, like, go to Mars right now. Like, straight, point. legit rocket scientist. Yeah, straight, 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 legit <laughs> rocket scientist. That's pretty and, great. And the only thing that the three of you, and Ramon, and everybody else here, Roger, everybody, have in common is that you guys want to know what Spider-Man's up to next, or what Batman's up to next, or something. Or I thought you were going to say, like, is me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> really, no, where I thought no, you were going no, with that. Yeah, no, 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 I wasn't going to go there. But like, you want a hug? Is this yeah, where this is, is going? Like, no, no, I, I, I've lived long enough without a hug. Uh, I, oh, <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I kind of need a I'm hug give now. Give a hug. Oh, oh. Right, 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 thank you. <laughs> okay, somebody wants us to rank the 12 MCU films. That's crazy. Um, Winter Soldier, number one. I will argue I, that and say Iron Man 1. What? Ooh, yes. Okay. That's like number Hold two on. for me. Who should Morgan Freeman play in the MCU? <laughs> Eternity. 
<laughs> you know what? Me play God, that's right? Good, yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty good thing. Yeah, that's good. That's a good idea. You should play Stan Lee in his next cameo. Stan Lee can't play his next cameo. <laughs> and are that's you terrible. worried that um, Ant-Man was the worst from my opening right behind Hulk? Second worst opening from Marvel, somebody asked. Oh, I, worried? I no. You gotta no, grade no. this on a curve. Let, let's answer that one first. Yeah. You gotta grade Ant-Man on a curve because it's, uh, it's Ant-Man. They, they yeah. made Ant-Man knowing it would be It's doing good yeah. for an Ant-Man movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, I, yeah. I, I feel like more than anything, Ant-Man was really a test for like how little Marvel can make in movies. And it's still pretty damn And you know what? High. This is still... This is going to be one of those movies that a lot of people didn't flock to see huh. right off the bat. A lot of people went to see that Amy Schumer flick that come out. Yeah, yeah I mean, she did made very well. Million. Yeah. yeah, it was like right behind it, I think. Yeah. I, I Wait, think Ant Man did she... 58, she did 52 or something like that. Who, who was Amy and also Schumer Minions in the Marvel was pretty good too. Minions was big, and I'm sure. surprised they, they didn't consider that. Yeah. This weekend will be, I think, it's the test of its metal when Pixels comes out, which not for nothing looks pretty funny. <laughs> and. If Ant-Man can remain at number one with, let's say, at least 75% of its original box office take, if Ant-Man hits again at 40 million or so, I think it'll do just fine Amy for the rest Schumer of its run. Spider -Woman. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right no. now. No, no, not at all. I'll, I'll Amy Schumer's a pretty girl, and she's, she's a curvy girl. Good for her. Especially like the Star Wars spread. I don't care that Lucas oh, is pissed it. off about it. <laughs> Anytime you have figures, action figures, and tits in the same picture, y'all yeah. remember that Incredible Hulk picture with the two tits on his fucking <laughs> okay, biceps? No, I don't remember. A Holy fan crap, oh, I'll send it that. to you. Yeah, send it to me. A fan just asked, um, Amy and Squirrel okay. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Oh, I can see that, actually. No, a fucked up question. What's the last um, cameo um, Stanley's going to do for MCU? That's a fucked up question. It is a fucked up question. I heard, I heard he said he was done, though. I don't think he's doing it anymore. That's it. I, I I heard that the I heard he uh, wasn't an Ant Man, and then next you know I see him in fucking Ant Man. Ant -Man. But yeah. I heard that was it. I heard he's not going to be doing anymore at this point. Well, I didn't hear that at all. But I I hope he continues to do it him for time immemorial. Was yes. he in Daredevil at all by any chance? The TV show? In any scene? I don't uh, know. I believe he was not. He was just in the photo in the in the police precinct. Yes. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. I think that counted as his, but like physically. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think he was on Agents of Shield. Was no, he no, he's never. So he hasn't done the No, TV wait. Is. I think he might have been on Agents of Shield once in it's season been so one. So many seasons, dude. It might, it might have been. I think so. Uh, yeah. So fan just brought this up. How just speculation as to the future and everything. How cool would it be to see She-Hulk versus Daredevil, even in the courtroom? Oh, oh wow, right. that'd be great. That would be great. Jennifer, yes. Let's get her in there. We could you we can get Amy somebody Schumer like nice and as She Hulk. <laughs> no, I think I'd like to see like Ronda Rousey as She Hulk or something like <laughs> right, that because she's right. hot and we, I don't agree care to, what color disagree. you paint her. Okay, okay. Agree to no disagree. more Stanley <laughs> taxidermy questions. Please uh, no. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Oh, wow. All right. Poor taste. Poor taste. Uh, Fantastic Four. Who's looking forward to that? I actually am personally. Here's Are my, you? Here's my perspective. Feel okay? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, <laughs> you you you've seen every single like speculation of how bad it's going to be, right? And the reality is, in my opinion, Fantastic Four is kind of a poisoned apple You uh, for Fox. You, you, you keep it true to like the core 60s stuff, and it's too corny for a modern audience. No, they should, I think they should have gone there. Maybe, but you have Incredibles already. Then you modernize it, and then hmm. you know the audience is still going to be upset that you didn't keep the core stuff. Sure. So the only thing you could do is just try to tell the best story you could possibly tell with whatever you have. And I think... Look, I'm not even a fan of Josh Trank. I actually didn't like Chronicle at all, but eh, I did. But he might, he might pull off. He's got, he's really got no support on what he's doing, so he might end up pulling something under his, uh, out of his hat. It's a good argument. I think it's a really a good consideration. So the way I who look knows? at Fantastic Four is this, and I've said this before on the show, but it bears repeating, being that the movie is like another week or so from coming out. I think is that right? This close? I thought it was it's coming closer it's, to Christmas, or something like that. No, no it's, it's in August. August. Oh it's wow. August. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, mean, I think it's like the beginning of August. See, that's how bad it is. It's not right. even being advertised um, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I think the individual characters will play the roles phenomenally. The kid that that's playing Reed Richards looks like Ultimate Reed Richards. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I don't who, who ends up being a psycho in Secret yeah. Wars right now. Sure. So, yeah. Uh, the yeah, naked thing, it, whatever. It bears every joke in the book, but whatever. Uh, yeah. My problem is, which was the same problem as the first one, Jessica Alba notwithstanding, is Doctor Doom. You've ruined one of the best villains uh, in comics. 
just we don't know him? if he's ruined yet. Right. We don't know if he's what? ruined. Yet. Well, they, they he's said, the they brother said... of jo- of Johnny and Sue. They're adopted. It's like this family goes around adopting little homeless white kids. But, What's but they, going on? But, but they said he's still like a gypsy Latvian prince. It just doesn't come out at all in this uh, script. I don't like when they wow, turn you got to metal. Dope bro. deep information there. That's what I heard. That's what I read. That's what they did it with Julian McMahon. Stop turning him to metal. Just have him get disfigured and put a damn armor on. Yeah, he's a mystic. Get, make him a wizard. Put his ass in Doctor Strange yes, that's the, as the yeah. second in line to Sorcerer Supreme, and you've got a movie right there. I'm, I'm yeah. hoping it bombs so that that Marvel Sony Fox deal mm-hmm. would Gets happen. It. Have you ever read Triumphant Torment? I don't think that, by I, the I way, think they no. still won't do it. Though, is my opinion actually. I uh, actually still don't think they would do it. I'm hoping. Oh wait, no, but, I have. Oh, with, with Doctor uh, Strange. Mike. Yes, of course I have. You got yes. another one. You got another one. Son of a new one. bitch. Got a new can, one. Can, can I? Can he I, came to avenge his brother. Can I, bring, can I bring comics in this for a second? That's yeah. what. That's kind of what we're here for, isn't it? Are you guys loving Secret Wars as much as I am? Because I love Secret Wars a lot. Yeah, I'm I love it. it. I'm having fun with it. Yeah, I'm enjoying. I'm, I'm enjoying the main series. I feel like it's a little too manic and crazy to, to follow everything else. Oh, you have oh to yeah, you can. absolutely. Pick and choose your favorite uh, spinoffs. Yeah, I, I, I can give you my top five spinoffs, but I have a whole review. Agree. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's, it's a weak spinoff list for me in terms of like I'm not getting into too many. Oh, there's a few. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the five you should read. You guys ready for the five that you should definitely? Read? I've read them all. I tried them all out. A lot of them fail. I'll give you the top five that you should definitely be reading. Future Imperfect, if you're a Hulk fan, is the best Hulk one by far, actually. All right. Maestro wants to become the new Doctor Doom. He wants to rule that entire planet. Okay. It's really interesting. Um, As far as X-Men is concerned, I think the best one is actually Extinction Agenda. Yes. I think the best part of X-Men has always been, like, underdogs versus... Yeah, yeah. because that E for Extinction shit. Yeah, Yeah. it's okay. Oh, but but the Extinction Agenda though, Havoc and Wolfsbane pretty much taking on the entire X Men just to cure like the legacy virus or that's something cool. close to that. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool, Ron. I do that a lot. Uh, Thor's is the best. Thor's is great. It's the best best tie-in of all. It's a cop show. That's all it is. It's yeah. phenomenal. It's Green, it's Green Lantern Corps done better. Yep, man. Yeah. absolutely. Uh, that's a title that needs to stay afterwards. Oh, Somehow dude. get that An to army stay. Of Thor's it would be great. Oh shit! Uh, Next uh, X Men starring Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, ah, uh, no. Uh, be- Get it? X- yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, where Where the Monsters Dwell is actually really good. If you guys haven't read it, I didn't it, read yes. that one yet. Yes, that is good shit. It's really good. It doesn't feel like. It doesn't feel oh, like. A- X Men, I get it. Yeah, yeah, X Men. <laughs> uh, I'm slow tonight, boys. I'm sorry. Wow, <laughs> it's like how many? Not that many. He's no, like, it's only two. Uh, it's been a long week. <laughs> where, the, where the Monsters Dwell doesn't feel like a, uh, a uh, Secret Wars tie in at all. It's just Garth Ennis writing like an. An asshole, like World War One pilot, and like they just he just lands with this hot woman in a place of dinosaurs and stuff, right? And just like just the characterization is like really smart, really well done, and everything. Garth Ennis, just Garth Ennis with foul language and mature subjects. And the last one I highly recommend that you guys may be surprised at: Marvel Zombies, man. Marvel Zombies that is, is fun. really that is, that is fun. a fun, damn good. damn good book. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah, you didn't mention Ultimate End. Which is one I'm I really hate enjoying. Ultimate End, really? Wow. Hmm. That seems like Dude, one of the titles Ultimate that Ultimate End should have ended at Ultimatum. Oh, I agree. Ultimate Absolutely. End, or at the very least, the last Ultimate Spider-Man issue, dude. None of the characters feel like they're written the way they were beforehand, man. That's it's, my whole problem. It's a little forced. But it seems to tie into the main title, the, the closest. Not at all. How about, I, I just, Thor's ties into the closest, actually. How about a Squadron book? Squadron I, I, Sinister's good. I like, I like good. Squadron. The only reason I don't put it in my top five is because it's solely, I think, for people who are huge fans of comics. I gotta okay, throw yeah. one in there. The Age of Apocalypse, uh, I was blown away by. I liked it. I liked it. Boy, I thought that was the best I'm spinoff always, that they've done. I'm a sucker for Age of Apocalypse. I, I, I thought this was done almost. I mean, it's brilliant. I, for every page was drawn perfectly. I thought it was written great. I love. I, that would be the one I continue. Like I didn't continue you know, you know a lot what? of the first issues. I, of that was I read days. that. I read that, and I'll tell you why I didn't put a top five. Joe Mad. I really wish Joe Mad was drawn. Well, of yes. course. I mean, but I think well, this guy. I think this guy, whoever himself. drew it, you know, was he was he trying did a to do Joe Mad. Job. Job. He yeah. was trying, but like, that, I just still wish it was him. Though. Of course. Somebody just commented, "Melted Hawkeye in Ultimate End was pretty sick." I, 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 I disagree, man. Melted Hawkeye, the, the Punisher, Ultimate Punisher, killing regular Punisher with a knife to the chest, man. That wow, was really? Dude, that, ha- yeah, yeah, that really? hasn't happened. We oh, haven't Ultimate gotten Ultimate End four yet. No, it's number three. Number three. Yeah, but the new one hasn't come out. Maybe he's got Kevlar. Yeah. On or something. Like the you know, you oh, can't oh, count Frank out yet. Wasp. Just, I think, I think that's it, dude. I think, I think it's that, that badly good. written that I think, I think he forgot to wear his Kevlar and his knife went. Through. That's another. Thing. Why that's, would Ultimate Punisher not think that regular? Frank that's wears one Kevlar? thing I didn't like yeah. about this series is, and I love Bagley's art, is that I can't tell the difference between who's who. 
Who's yeah. the young one? Who's the old one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Who's yeah. ultimate Tony? Yeah, yeah. Who's regular Tony? I'm looking Stanley at Bagley 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 art. Yeah, yeah. Bag, I, Bagley's consistent. I'll tell, tell you, in my opinion, oh, my and, favorite Spider-Man artist, Barnum. Oh, he's so good. Bagley, man. He's Bagley. He's, he's consistent, but he's not. Come on, man. I, I, I don't think so he's the greatest. Others, man. He's not the best at all. You're a McFarlane guy. No, I'm a Romita guy. Man. Romita oh, is the fuck best him. Boy. Romita. All right, classics Romita is senior, classics. Romita senior, man. Sure, classics is classics. Headband, headband, Gwen Stacy, man. How can you top that? I mean, it was. Okay. Absolutely right. Good looking Peter Parker. Before him, Peter Parker was not. He was a herb. Yeah, he was Gene, a herb. Gene Colon, right? Well, yeah. No, that was after, though. That was after. I mean, but I mean, like, he he was. He carried on that Ramita S kind of oh, absolutely. flavor. Yes, absolutely, he was another absolutely. top guy. Absolutely. We had a question. Uh, right, did any of you guys read Big Man Plans, which concluded I, I last week? I started week. reading no, it. I like haven't it. finished it. I'm behind schedule it's on that. I read crazy. the first one. He's like one. an angry dwarf that was in the military and in Vietnam, and he comes back even angrier. <laughs> he's an angry of, dwarf? Yeah, he's a little man. Wow. Is Adam reading this? That's what it's called, Big Man Plans. No, he's, I don't, I don't know. Plans. So what is this? Peter Dinklage takes revenge? <laughs> Something. You know, like he, he goes to Vietnam, and because he's so small, he goes into the tunnels to go after the Viet Cong. Right. So oh, he's like, cool. he's used for the extra dirty shit. He comes back, something's up with his sister, and I forgot. And I have the books, I just haven't read it because we covered number ones every fucking week. <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, it gets tough, man, falling behind. Chickless on Gotham. Okay. What do you guys think? Dinklage would be great in the movie. Yes, he would be. <laughs> that too is by Keith. That was a question? Yeah. Dinklage on Gotham? Okay. Oh, uh, uh, no, Chickless on Gotham. Chickless, Michael Chickless, Chickless yeah. on yeah. Gotham. Well, Chickless is a great actor. I think yeah, I agree. Wrong. Oh, he's a great actor. Yeah. Speaking of acting, that was Daredevil wasn't your first role, right? No, 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 no. What else have you done that people might have seen you in? I've been doing this for ten years. Um, oh boy. Oh, yeah, Stage-wise, the best stage credit or my favorite stage credit I have is Evil Dead the musical. I was in the original Broadway cast of Evil Dead the I musical. I missed that. The one here, oh, right awesome. on yeah. New York. Yeah, the one on New York stages in New York and fiftieth. Thank you. The guy who played the guy. Listen, you're a great. You comic. seen it? I saw it. The guy who played Ash was phenomenal, dude. I understudied him. I was my oh, own character, oh, okay. and I understudied him for Ash. Uh, Ryan Ward from Canada. Big ups, brother. Right. Uh, he's great. He's done it for years, and he's got it down pat. He's great. Um, I played a lot of different characters. I um, was in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie last year, but that scene got cut uh, because that was when Fitchner was the shredder. I don't know if you guys heard about that version. So, uh, Fitchner remind me, remind William Fitchner played there. like that arms dealer mad scientist character who kind of like employed the big Asian guy who oh, was right. Shredder. Which, I, where, he's the villain in like every movie in he's everything. ever been right, in. Right, he's awesome. But I'm really glad they didn't make the white dude Shredder in the, in the long run. I remember hearing a lot of backlash at the time when I was filming and I think that was probably under a lot of scrutiny. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, but anyway, you know, it... Uh, but that was his name. His name was... Um, Oh god, now I can't remember what his his character's name was, but it was an offshoot of Oroku Saki. Yeah, yeah. So like um, yeah, Oroku something. Steinsky or something. <laughs> I can't think of it. <laughs> but yeah, that was that kind of started things back up for me though, thankfully. So I still credit them. I still, you know, I don't have anything bad to say about that production whatsoever. Um, yeah, and then uh, Unforgettable, Person of Interest, Alpha House, uh, a show called Us and Them, which I play a really funny cop uh, that's airing overseas right now. That was a Fox show. It got canceled here, but then they picked it up overseas, so it's airing right now, and I finally saw some of it. And it's got Alexis Bledel, Michael Ian Black, Carrie Kenny, Kurt oh, Fuller, nice. greatest cast. Ashley Atkinson, love you, she's great. Uh, it was awesome. So and then that you can redub funny. your lines in that English accent. You do so well. <laughs> no, no, they oh. don't do that. It's like it's all American accents over there, <laughs> you know. But they love it because it's like enchanting. Actually, I think English people don't like American accents. They think it's rubbish. <laughs> I work with a bunch of British people, and to to listen to them when they try to do English act like my accent, right. you know, it's weird. Yeah, it's a little weird. And I wonder if I sound as weird when I try to sound like them. Probably. You know what I mean? I did it for a chap, a chap in London, and they, they he actually thought it was pretty good. And I was like, <laughs> wow, that's a good compliment. I'll take it. So, you actually yeah. sound like my buddy James, so I'm going to obviously have to show this video too. James, if you're watching, he's going to show you this video <laughs> about like, my fucking accent. <laughs> so, when I get into it more, I sound more like David Hubbin. David St. Hubbins from Spinal Tap. Oh, <laughs> Mike right. like, yeah, you no, did, we're not going to fucking do Stonehenge. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. That's where I fade into that kind of like milieu. I like how you can just do it on command too, no less. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I, I was impersonating... Toby Leonard Moore. You just switched to Australia. Australian. He's, uh -huh. a, he's an Aussie guy and he does Wesley. He plays James Wesley in Daredevil. And uh, Toby's like one of the greatest guys in the world. He's currently uh, working on Billions for Showtime. 
But I just fade right into that one as well if I can. I mean, I don't, I can't sustain it as, as, as well. You're doing a pretty good job of it, though. But he's he's awesome. He's got the greatest Aussie accent. I love that guy. That's and it's funny. Like you don't even shameless register plug, it. Toby. Shameless plug. <laughs> you don't even register that he's not just a regular old American guy. No, he's phenomenal with that. As is Charlie. You know, Charlie does a great American accent. I forgot he's British. There you go. Charlie Cox is very much a British actor, and he's he does a great job. Shit. Yep. The whole but cast, the whole cast is insane. Dude, British man, half the cast of Walking Dead is British. I know, yeah, it's insane. Man. Yeah, good point. Andrew Lincoln's like, you take, listen to him on uh, on <laughs> Talking yeah. Dead, and you yeah. always forget. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Totally, He's yeah, that's British. I mean, it's true. All but right. they never cast American dudes. Like they wouldn't cast like a bunch of guys from Brooklyn to be Brits, except Chris Pine in this new Disney shipwreck movie. Almost got him. Oh. Um, it, like, he, right apparently there, he's man. got like a Good British, guy. I think he has a British accent in this movie. I really? saw the preview and I'm like, he's, is he talking like this? It's like, no. The only thing, like British guys can do regular old yeah. American accents. Like let's say, like, you just plant them like right in, let's say Kansas Superman or somewhere. Henry yeah, Cavill Henry, is British? Yeah. Henry Cavill's British. I don't think I've British. ever heard him talk in anything but Superman. <laughs> yes. yes. The Tudors. Oh no. I've never Tudors. watched it. He was Dude. in uh, oh, Count of Monte Cristo. I'm good at math. I don't need a tutor. Oh man. Dude, Douche. I've never I've never been xenophobic or uh, or against foreign people, especially since my parents are and I'm, you know my parents are Greek or whatever. You're Greek? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, yeah. Surprise. Uh, but when they were casting Captain America, man, I, I just like I was ready to chain myself up in front of uh, you know Disney or Marvel or whoever it was at the time. <laughs> You're like, you cast anything but an American to play Captain America, man. That would have yeah. been horrible. That would have been horrible. Backlash. I mean, insult us. That's that's how bad we'd be. You know, I saw oh, you could play you him, should, by the way. Somebody just said Thank you should you, be uh, the new Crocodile Dundee, bro. Oh, that's oh, that right. right. <laughs> I mean, keeping my hat to you there, mate. It's, I mean, I'd take it in a second if they wanted to go there again. If they get a girl as hot as that girl that played it in the movie, I mean, I'll be back. I in just a that just popped. Up on Netflix. I was watching it again over the weekend. That girl's great. that woman. I cannot remember her name. That actually she's just strangely hot in that movie. Yeah. Something about her was great. Anyway, uh, what was I gonna say? In yeah. London, uh, yeah. there was a, a huge na- amount of Captain America T-shirts. Like more. No way. Yeah, that From was British a, people. Man? Yeah, and I said to them, "How come we're not getting a freaking Braddock?" Yeah. Let me yeah, get yeah. Captain Britain, yeah, like yeah, one yeah. guy, one Damn gal nice. representing uh, Captain Britain, but no Excalibur, nothing like that. It was like all Captain America, which I thought was really like cool. And sweet, but it was fascinating to me that there was so many. When you notice that at a Comic Con, an exorbitant amount of one thing, mm-hmm. then that actually, you know, that says something. Because it's tons of comic stuff I everywhere. I know that I've ever seen a Captain Britain cosplayer. Dixie, I'd, I'd love to see like, right. Dixie Wrecked. The Dixie, actress in Dundee was Dixie, Dixie Wrecked. Wrecked. Thank you. She's great. <laughs> I hope she's out there. Dixie, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, um,. Doctor Strange can open up the door for Captain Britain. It'd be great. He is mystical. He is mystical. Yes, it'd be great. So, but, but and he's got question. that whole other is world he, is he, is tied he, to he, X-Men, actually, instead of... I mean, what, what Psylocke his, is in Apocalypse. What was his first appearance? I would imagine that Captain, that. Captain Britain comics, but Psylocke's first appearance was also in uh, uh, Dare, Daredevils or Captain Britain Did comics. Did it again. Also. What a dickhead. Did it again. Did what again? Dixie wrecked. <laughs> Ah. Oh. 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 All right, that one was, and I haven't had any scotch. <laughs> you definitely got me there. Good one. Well, now we're just gonna fucking IMDb the shit. Yeah. Because now that, we need to know. Then we'll show you who's erect and who's not. What if her name really is Dixie Wrecked, well, and then it's not really. Making, I knew that was bullshit. I just couldn't figure it out. Like, this has gotta be bullshit. Dude, yeah, I don't. I completely. That goes to show how much we're like really paying attention to the answer. Like that's actually kind of rude. We're sorry for not really. Apparently, it's the Linda answer. Kozlowski. That there you go. That doesn't sound like anything. Linda Kozlowski. They got me to say. They got me to. That guy got me to say Dixie Wrecked. I love you. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, you pretty man. much earned your red badge of courage on the Peach Man. Yeah, that's that's the highlight of my night right there. Dixie Wrecked, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> People are just like taking that little snippet that's going to be a fucking oh, gift. Oh, God. I'm so no, sorry. No, no. no, it's fine. I embrace it wholly because that's some comedy. Don't right say there. things like that either. <laughs> I embrace it wholly. <laughs> I embrace it wholly, envelop. No, it's great. Oh man, I got a little. That's, Daredevil, that's, Daredevil's that's, gonna be defending a a, 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 a guy <laughs> named Dick Erect. Absolutely. <laughs> Richard Erect, please approach to his dad. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Thank you for that. That was a good one. Is there a huge ass in the house? <laughs> I'm huge ass. <laughs> I'm gonna level with you, sir. This prank call has gone horribly wrong, so I'm gonna bail out now. <laughs> 
I have to say one thing though. Speaking of like, um, you know, British people playing Americans and doing obviously a really good job of it. What the fuck happened to the guys in Punisher Warzone oh, no, who were was, trying to play Brooklyn guys? That was a mistake. Like all they had to do was kind of like follow me around for about a week or yeah. so, and they would have had the accent down to a science. Great actor yeah. though. The guy who played Jigsaw. They were good. It was just from, not I remember him from as the wire. He's people. Fucking phenomenal. Oh, the wire. They just can't play shows. Brooklyn people. He just can't. Yeah, he can't. Like hey yo, like they sounded like a really bad Sylvester Stallone. Hey yo, cuz. Yeah. Yeah. Hey yo. Uh, your war zone. No, that's not the line. You're not supposed to say the title of the movie. Cut. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, your war zone. How you doing? <laughs> that's no. actually a really good accent. Hey, well, thank you very much. It's all these little kids and stallions got, you know. No, I haven't had any, I swear. <laughs> Did they retool the costume for season two, DDs? Again, he, he can't talk about season two. But do you see the shit-eating grin? That's enough. I'm here to talk about anything you might want to know about season one if How you hot haven't seen it. Is, what's her name? Uh, blah, 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 Deborah Ann Wool. How hot is she? She's actually blonde in the, in the show. I don't know rat's ass. <laughs> I'm, I'm very good buddies with EJ Scott, her boyfriend. And oh. uh, I'm going to say hi, EJ. <laughs> Look him uh, up and see if he's bigger than us, if we can take him. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say that EJ... He's got to be about six, EJ six. is bigger than you. He kind of that, looks like Daredevil. Uh, he's bigger than me? For the record, being bigger <laughs> than me isn't a tough call. No, but I mean, EJ's bigger than all of us. And, uh, and EJ's... He's got it. EJ, you've got it all, is he, man. Is he bigger yes. than uh, Vincent? No. No. Right, Vincent's, Vincent's six foot four. Is he that big? Yeah. Damn. He's a big boy. Yeah. Wow. No, but EJ, Deborah is absolutely lovely. One of the greatest gals. She is so down to earth and calm and cool. And, uh, and my wife and her got along so well, and that was great. And uh, it was just one big happy family there. They're That's the a good question. Is there like a phase two of shows? Or is it just uh, I hear I hear rumblings about thoughts of that plan. I know there's plans. I mean, look, all I can say is meeting Jeff Loeb at the rap party uh, was one, an honor, and two, we talked about Commando, greatest thing ever. Three, uh, he's so freaking smart, and I love the fact, and Joe Quesada as well. Joe and Jeff kind of helming this Marvel television thing in the sense that you've got these guys that are so passionate about the business from day one, they, they cut their teeth in the business from day one. They're originals. They are true comic originals, and they're true comic greats. I, you don't need me to tell you that. Like, you already know that. Mm. They're, They're running... Daredevil Yellow. Oh, oh man, it's so good. Dare, that's actually Charlie's... Uh, as awesome. I understand, it's Charlie's like go-to book was Daredevil Yellow for research, as I think I heard him say. On EJ's podcast, so you should all listen to that. I think I might be on there soon. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but, look, when you got someone like Jeff Loeb running Marvel Television, you're in the greatest hands. Like... That's a guy who knows how to do stuff. Well, I trust his him. His and Tim Sale's little miniseries were always the best ones. Still waiting on Captain America White. Everybody. Right? Yes. Soon. Everybody in the mud's waiting for that Coming shit. Soon. Of course they are. It's, it's just such good stuff. Spider-Man Blue? Come on. That was great. Hulk Gray was one of my Hulk favorite. Hulk Gray's phenomenal. Oh, the whole color phenomenal. series. It's just... Yeah. Batman Long Halloween. I mean, that one... Hush. Hush. That was actually my first introduction oh, Hush is great, to that creative team. Yeah. Jeff Loeb Hush? Come yeah. on. Uh, yeah. It's choose. I could just tell you so much, like, Long Halloween is in, like, top maybe five to ten Batman books all time. Yeah. yeah. And Almost now, and, you know, across the yeah, board. Yeah. It's, it's considered the year two. Like, Frank Miller's year it's, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, that's two. so smart to call it that. I never heard yeah. that. Year one, killing joke. I think Death in the Family is up there, too. I mean, like, Long Halloween, uh, The Man Who Laughs. There's so many great ones that yeah. hush. Man Who Laughs was a great Man little, was cool, what, what do you call it, a graphic novel, trade paperbacks, like just one it's of those. like a mini, yeah. It was, two, it was yeah. two issues, ultimately. Was Doug Mank, I believe, was that? Yeah, Doug Mank. Yeah. Doug yeah. Mank art, so good. Yeah, no, Ed, Ed Brubaker Ed Bru wrote it, yeah. I'm such a big great Batman question. fan. That's when you know it's nuts. Uh, some fans are asking, are you involved in season two? Yes, you are. We've he, mentioned he that already. Comment. I never said I was or can't wasn't, on oh, the record. Okay, well. Well, we're all hoping we don't know. that you are. For the record, I have not said anything about to, involvement. Um, what are your thoughts on the Dead Devil's final costume in the end of season one? I love it. You know why? It, uh, it's tactical. It's realistic yes. in the mm -hmm. sense that, all right, I love that they make a comment, you know, the horns are a bit much. Oh, mm -hmm. my God, really? And yeah, that's just that's the shit. That's I love that. They just shit. throw it in there because it is a little bit, you know, like it's out of the comic book, for goodness mm -hmm. sake. But I think it's great that they had Melvin, you know, construct it. And I love that they made everybody wait. 
and you had to just deal with the vigilante costume. A lot of things I heard, including myself, is you almost forget and you don't care that he's wearing the vigilante costume. You just accept it yeah. as daredevil. And the fight scenes, you're like, forget it. This is just crazy. It's oh great. my God. I love it because yeah. it's tactical. I like the multicolor thing. I like, hey, look. I may get a little razzing for this, but I even like Ben Affleck's costume to a large degree too. I thought it was cool looking, and it was all we had at the time. So mm -hmm. I, you have to kind of remember the costume when that was definitely not the worst part of that movie. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely, neither is Ben Affleck. And, and, and credit to him, like I don't believe the the fallacies in that movie is necessarily his fault. He's an actor. He's a good actor. I think that there was a lot of things that play there's there. a lot that has to yeah. like anytime there's a bad movie. The blame never seems to go to the writers of the movie. Or director. Like, or, is, Superman is Returns. And people always blame poor Brandon Routh for that and he Kevin Spacey. visually he's perfect face, as he's Superman. Face, though. There, somebody wrote in a super baby and somebody higher up said, that's a brilliant idea. That, where, where's the blame? He did a great or, or kind, someone of, higher kind up of like said, Christopher Reeve sounding voice, though. He, yeah. yeah, that it was, was unbelievable. A, he was yeah, yeah. too much Christopher Reeve, in my opinion. Well, but he was perfect. As yeah. you know, that was like Brian Singer's love letter to those movies. Yeah, it was, So it's yeah. kind of like, yeah, he loved those movies too in much. that way it makes sense, but I understand what you mean. Yeah. You, you, you can't get somebody who loves movies or comics to take over. You gotta, you gotta get somebody who doesn't care about them who actually is able to objectively pick out what's good about them. You know? Yeah, I mean, look, one... when we had that, I'm sorry. To... No, good. Uh, cool. When we had that first wave of comic book movies, the Ghost Riders, the Punishers of the sure. World, the, uh, you know, the Spider-Man, Raimi wave, like yeah. the Daredevil. X-Men. X-Men. One, especially. It, it was all we had. Like, look at Batman Keaton. You know, we can pick that apart all day. Oh, but, you know, I'll tell yeah. you what. But, you know, well, we when, I was, when I was nine years old, I went to the theater three times to see that. That, was, right. that was dark Batman for yeah. the 1966 sure. Adam West version yeah. that we kind of, you know, that's all we had in reruns for such a long time as kids. And then we had Keaton, and then we had, you know, like, it just kept, it keeps changing. I think that... Then we had Clooney, and then we had... And we had Clooney, which, again, like, <laughs> even Batman and Robin wasn't Clooney his fault either. Clooney could have a great either. job. I think Clooney was fine. Schumacher it's was Schumacher. Shit. So that well, my point... And he it, finally apologized for and that. And it all comes back to that same point, though. I'm glad we had all those. I'm glad we had all of them. The good, the bad, the ugly. I, I'm glad because I never thought in this day and age, like, in my adult life as an actor, that I'd, one, be part of it, let alone, I want everybody to win. Mm. I want every. I want Warner Brothers to crush it. I want them to come back with guns blazing and make a great movie universe. I want Marvel to continue there. So I want to see all this stuff because I'm a fan. Like I want everybody to right. just kill That's it. That's what I want too. Yeah. You Except know? for Fox. And so you know. They, <laughs> no, I want I, Fox no. to crush it too. Come on, I want, man. I want, the future pass. And Deadpool. Like give me a break. Deadpool looks Deadpool so Deadpool looks great because De Fox gets it. Yeah. Fox gets it now. Finally. You and look, I think that like an great. avocado. Had sex with an older avocado. <laughs> <laughs> that movie looks really like this spot on. I just think one thing, as a fan, I say I think some fans should just relax a little bit yeah. because mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to please everybody. everything in your heart, yeah, one, let alone everybody else's. Take the stuff that you like out of it and just try and run with that because the, everyone's, I, I don't think everyone's out to just make money. I think we've got great people running great stuff. Like, it's a new wave. Jeff Loeb is, is running Marvel Television, for yeah. goodness sakes. That's like a dream come true. Who I mean, better? Like, take, take, take what's going on in movies right now and apply it to how it was in comics. You got, in the 60s, you got Stan Lee comes in and Jack Kirby comes in, right? And Jack Kirby was a huge fan of, like, the science fiction stuff, but right. these guys were just telling stories as best as they can. But then when you debuted Roy Thomas and John Buscema and all those guys... Oh, John Buscema is one of my favorites. Forgot about him. Those guys were fans of comics different levels who, who like were yeah. able to take what they like about comics and elevate it and mm -hmm. that's where we are at movies right now Jim they take that just what seems they to be like the evolution out. of the artist and writer Starango as years go on because they these he's, people grew uh, up he's a reading the he classics and now they yeah. make their own right yeah. so so now we're getting the movie the fans who watch the, the the Tim Burton Batman and now we're like really I think stepping up a level of what we can see what fan what they think fans want to see and yeah. you guys like opinion. you grew up reading them and shit and now you get to play uh, shit on TV yeah I will say that there is one there's one little aspect that I would have liked to see in part one and this is just me being a little part bit of a of fan what? of Daredevil of, Daredevil. The, of the first season series one. season one season one I'm sorry I understand what uh, you mean. it's okay they took a lot of their <laughs> references and the costume and everything from the Man Without Fear yes. miniseries. Yes, great Miller yeah, piece yeah, of work. Absolutely. One of the greatest lines was at the end of that series, and I think you know where I'm going with it, when he says, yeah, so I'm going to you know, do this whole vigilante thing, even made myself a costume. 
Be damned if I know what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I would have liked something a little bit along the lines of that. Like, how does he know it's red? He doesn't. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a Throw good point. Throw in a little. Someone this, told him. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a good point. Yeah. Good just point. for the sake of comedy, just like it, it wasn't necessary, just a little homage to, yeah. you know. Well, I love when he got his apartment in episode one. Yeah. You know, when Karen's looking at the big neon sign buyout, and then she's like, how can you stand it? And he said something along the lines of, it's like, you know, it doesn't know really this. matter to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a great deal on it. It's like I'm told it's a nice view. Right, <laughs> something, yeah, something like that. Like that. It's, it's great. So yeah. Oh man. So, Here we are. Pretty much. Uh, can I plug my thing? Of course you can, sir. Alrighty. So uh, fans of uh, Pete's Basement, I, uh, I'm working on a comic myself right now. It's called uh, Millennials. It's an X-Men parody. It's a. Uh, it's about the most hated. Moving closer. The most hated and feared in front group. Of uh, which are millennials these days, right? I got characters like Entitle Man. <laughs> I got uh, who's, who absorbs white privilege and uses energy blast. Uh, Cyber <laughs> Bully. <is> <laughs> um, Mr. Hideous, who's a monster like the Beast, but takes a lot of selfies and puts it online. Uh, Buzz Girl, who's got sentient nanobots who do her bidding. And uh, I have uh, our, our boy Pete over here. I'm gonna show you, and maybe we'll post it online in the uh, episode itself, not the live. I'm stream, a character. Obviously. You are in it. Oh boy. You're not a character person. You are, you're in it. You, you yourself are in it. Oh great. Here we go. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it too, man. So, uh, here, here's, here's Mr. Hideous taking a picture with you. And, uh, uh, here's, uh, here's where a brick wall's about to fall and crush you, Pete. <laughs> you can't and, see uh, any of this, obviously, but it, it's quite nice. Not live. Watch the episode, though. That looks just, who drew that? You? No, that was actually Tom Griffin. Tommy drew that? Tommy drew that. That's uh, great. Look at the arms. Yeah. He's all jacked up. Yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, actually, it's the hair that he's yeah. really got just on point. So here's the thing. So the way we planned it out, we were going to kill you off, actually. The, okay. The, the wall falls and crush you. But then we decided, since I will be on the episode, why not throw it on the fans, you know, <laughs> Jason Todd style, all right? So you're going to let them vote whether I live or die? So I do have an Indiegogo going Show on. that just in case they can actually see that. That's really good. Okay. Um, that is a great homage, and we should send that to me so I can post it, it to our Instagram. Roger has it. Roger has it. It's a very good death in the family homage to Jason Todd, save him or kill him. <laughs> it says, it says, Pete will die because millennials want attention, but you can prevent it. <laughs> Donate to millennials, you are special, Indie, Indiegogo, or email emillennialsthecomic at gmail.com. If you guys donate within seven days of broadcast, up to two hundred dollars, Pete will be saved. No one will be saved, but he'll have superpowers and stuff. I get oh, by superpowers. The way, here's you, Ramon. You're holding Pete's dead body. Here. <laughs> I'm gonna be donating myself tomorrow. <laughs> if so you don't, you if you don't donate. make two hundred bucks, Pete's lifeless body will be with. Do we know three. what kind of superpowers that I'm going to get? I can't. I can't. I All can't right. tell you. It's just like Daredevil season two questions. I mean, he is non-disclosed. Cannot. Cannot discuss. It's brick wall collapsing preventative powers. <laughs> Anyway, I've seen some of these proofs. These artists that he's got working on this are great. That's right. And they should be discovered, actually. Uh, that one, uh, the guy said Mexico? The guy That's from right. Mexico? Uh, uh, his name is uh, uh, Gil Guilherme, Guilherme? Uh, Villarreal. Guilherme. Guilherme. Guilherme Villar Villarreal. He's amazing, actually. I think he should be professional already. Once he makes this comic and you know does something for me, dude, he's going to be a big deal. You guys are hearing about him right now. Maybe we'll scroll through some pictures right now uh, in the episode. Maybe not. This Probably is gonna not. be a, this is gonna be just a raw feed. This is this is it. <laughs> sure. So, but send us as much so as no. you can. So like no, Twitter, Twitter, etc. So what? We, yeah. It, so we can Twitter, share. Twitter, millennials, uh, millennials comics, uh, Instagram, millennials the comic, Tumblr, millennials the comics, uh, the comic rather. Uh, millennials, you are special. That's the Indiegogo you're looking for. Millennials, all right? It's it's yeah, the most feared and hated group. Debt collectors, these Sentinels are out collecting uh, college debt from. Uh, Millennials. And so that's basically like Indiegogo.com so forward slash Millennials. Millennials, you are special. You are special. Right. There are, are there spaces in between or is just one word? It's going to be hyphens in between. But if you, just, in between search, each if word. you just search Millennials, I'm sure we're the only ones that are coming up right now. Okay. It's genius. So just in case you guys don't have a command of the English language, uh, just in case that there are other groups of Indiegogos titled Millennials, like there's really like just hipsters trying to buy cheese or something, because sure. people just run Sponsor the dumbest Indiegogo buying. shit. Yeah, yeah right, seriously. 
Yeah. It would be millennials dash U dash R dash special. Right. No dash after that. That's right. And then hit the enter button. Yeah, right, right, right. Yes, and must send. Uh, yeah. So uh, guys, uh, could you like donate to this guy? I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna I would like tomorrow. to live. Aww, tomorrow I shall be <laughs> donating. Uh, our boy Matt wants to know, can we get in the book with a donation? Is there a prize level that they can get in the book? A actually, for uh, uh, if you donate, uh, I believe $40, you're in the book. If you donate $100, you're in the book with powers. You will be a millennial. If you donate $200, you will have complete control over your character, actually. You will wow. tell us where that character goes and stuff. That's what's going to happen. That's pretty fun incentive there. That's a I good really incentive, man. Pete, mm. if you want to save your character... God, I just want to <laughs> save my own damn hide. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I'm uh, just checking that Twitter feed, y'all. Uh, I already have a couple of donations. We got uh, 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 my friend uh, Wally. The no. same. Not that time, motherfucker! <laughs> not that time, motherfucker! <laughs> We're not taking that beat. <laughs> I'll try whoa, again. Whoa, 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 he, he, he said there's already a, group, a book called Millennials by a guy named Lou, Lou Skunt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why I don't fall for that one. Because my boy Vinny, who is getting married fucking tomorrow, my boy Vinny's Guyanese, his name is Vinod, but because he was hanging out with me, I said, your name is Vinny. Yeah, so yeah. I made him Italian, basically. Skunt. <laughs> every time he's Guyanese, West Indian, so every time he would get married, he's like, you're skunt. But a skunt. So I was like, all right, I know that word. Wait a minute. Skunt. <laughs> nope, not That was a good time. try, though. Who? Skunt. <laughs> By the way, I want to wish a hearty congratulations to Vinny and Victoria tomorrow on your wedding day. Uh, I will be in this wedding. If you guys have me on regular Instagram, you get to see me in my Indian garb. I got my little pajamas that I'm going to wear. I forget my, what my. the name of it was. Uh, Vinny's got the shawarmi, 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 something. I don't remember what it is. Shawarmi, something like that. I'm white. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, I remember the scarf I was supposed to get was a kurta, and I forgot to order that. The one thing. The one thing. Yeah. I don't. I don't think any of the other guys got it either, so I'm okay. <laughs> no, in your luck, they're all gonna have it. They probably all will. Because God hates me. <laughs> He's Swami. No. That's no, that's thing. no. That's a completely different thing. No, no, no. Close enough. Duali? No. Duali, the holiday? No, that's the holiday. I know. I'm just thinking of things that end in E. Uh, Eid. No, it's. Uh, not we got any West Indian fans out there right now in Peach Basement Land that can help me out with this? I don't remember what it was. I could text Vinny, but then, I mean. Leave the boy alone now. Where's the thing. sound guy, Matt? Matt, yell, ha Matt. Matt, yell hello. Matt's right there. <laughs> you gotta be allowed. Going a Come powder on. blue tux and a bl Thorn NYC said Aladdin. Bro, when I put the shit on, Vinny called me the white Aladdin. Not a joke. Is that right? Yeah, swear to God. Wasn't Aladdin no. the white Aladdin? <laughs> Aladdin was kind of drawn you white. To show yeah. that? No, I think he wants to show him the white Aladdin. I'll, I'll post a picture on my Instagram tomorrow. I didn't want to spoil the surprise for nobody that, uh, you know. Wasn't that was gonna be at the wedding tomorrow? So, congratulations, Cheers. guys! Many happy years together. And uh, I know I have to be careful tomorrow because v Vinny's a good drinker, man, and I can't keep up with can't this guy. Can't keep up with him, man. Oh, man, I tried for a lot, dude. I tried for twenty years, man. This guy drink me under a table twice over. Forget wow. about it. West Indians, man. The nod. <laughs> he's gonna get shit face his wedding. No, he just he doesn't. He just keeps drinking and drinking, oh. and he's fine. Huh. They know. Roger and Jarek know. He's he's a professional. Good stuff. He's a robot. <sighs> he might be. Maybe he's cyber. Lady Jolin <laughs> says shout out to Mr. Walker. He's a true talent. Hey, Ooh. how are you, hon? It's great to see that you're watching or listening or both. Little both. Little awesome. Both. I gave you a shout out earlier. I don't know if you were listening. Or Hopefully she it. did see that. Yes. Anyway, this is your second one, so consider yourself <laughs> very special. Well, guys, that just about does it. Tyler, thank you for being on the program, man. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, you very much. You are welcome back guys. anytime. The door is always open. You guys out there, uh, the door is open, but ring first because I do sorry have axes and stuff. So Sorry? She said sorry was late to the party. That's okay. Uh, You're never late. Better Bye. late than never. Oh, I do have one question. She Speaking runs the parties. Tommy Cats. That's Joel, and she's amazing, and she does such a great job with that Tommy Cats thing. I thank you so much. She's very, very generous. There is, uh, I should say, tomorrow... Uh, I don't know if I'm doing it or she's doing it, but there's a trivia question 
for anybody that's following at TommyCats24, she asked this trivia question. There is a custom Francis t-shirt by an amazing artist, uh, the name's escaping me right now. Uh, she commissioned this girl, Heather, Heather, to do this picture of Francis holding like an automatic handgun in a suit. And it came out fantastic. And it says awesome. Tommy Cats awesome. with an official nice. logo by uh, Stephanie. And uh, there is a little button and a t-shirt. And if you can answer this question, you have to inbox Jolin at Tommy Cats 24. Heather Hoffman. Heather Hoff, Heather, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> um, she's great, she does a lot of great work on Tumblr. She did a couple of Wesley and myself before as well. Awesome, anyway, if you answer this question tomorrow, you could win this t-shirt and button, which is kind of custom, it's custom made. We don't have like a big order yet. Mm. So the question is, uh, I did an off-Broadway musical for a number of years, still running. I'm not in it anymore. But at the time, I had done it with a former alumni of Saturday Night Live. That is all I can say. If you can name that person and you win the raffle or you enter in time, you could win the t-shirt and the button. So you don't have to name the musical, you have to name the SNL cast member that you did it with, right? You might have to name both. You, have to, <laughs> you might have to name both. So it, for good measure, just throw in the name of the musical too. Yes, try and find out the name of the musical, but I think most importantly... I think if they find out the name of the musical, that the rest can be extrapolated. Yeah, the Saturday Night Live alum, yeah, yeah would be... Now actually, we, <laughs> we're not going to leave just yet. Uh, since you brought up, you know, custom it's both. stuff and everything. It closes tomorrow night. It closes tomorrow night, and it's both the musical name and the Saturday Night Live alum that guested with us during that time. You got a Lego out of this whole Daredevil <laughs> thing. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Also, shout out to Lego Daredevil, who be has been recreating awesome, like, uh, you know, monumental scenes from various episodes. And the Tommy Cats and, all, and everybody there were saying along with me, it's like, I hope you get a Francis scene in there. And they did. They said, oh, that was on the docket. They did one, of course, from episode 12. It came out great. Uh, when my families and friends saw that, they were just like, you know, forget being in Daredevil. They were more like, oh, you're made. You got a Lego. Yeah. <laughs> that's it pretty didn't matter. Wild. Daredevil, you got a Lego. Forget being on TV, in the movies, doesn't matter. Yeah, like, what about like that some show? sort of action figure. Yeah, yeah. You're gold. What about that movie? What about that show? Isn't, you know, no, 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 Lego. <laughs> uh, so that was, that was really special. Uh, everything that kind of has happened with Daredevil related to the show or... or being part of more than one superhero like genre thing at all is just like it's the coolest thing in the world, you know. So it's got to be the biggest you know. geek out session you could ever imagine. It's pretty great. I met uh, Christos and Christos Gage and Ruth Fletcher Gage, Ooh. who are my dear friends. No, wait. Somebody says you didn't do the Aussie accent for us. He did. He never did the. He was doing oh, Aussie said, for like said, ten minutes. So like Art and Bala, I was doing like a Toby Lennon Moore earlier, and I was doing it for like a long time, and I was doing it where I didn't even fail. I was going over and over and over, and I was talking to Pete, and I was telling him that this is exactly how Toby sounds. Not like only it. did he do it, he got nominated to be the new Crocodile Dundee. Yeah, I got like, and then someone tricked us and told us it was Dixie Wrecked who played the hot blonde girl, in Crocodile Dundee one and two. And we fail for it. So totally there you fail go. for it. Lock, stock, and barrel. So there is that Aussie accent slash Toby impression. And Toby, remember that impressionism is the highest form of flattery. And you know I love you, so there ain't no worry there. But uh, also, I will say, Christos Gage, who's a, as, as you should know, comic geeks out there. Dude, one a, of the best writers I think out there. Totally underrated, actually. Wow, I agree with you. And yeah. thank I think you. He's I underrated? I think he. I, I think he gets he, he gets a lot of work, but I don't think he's acclaimed for the work that he does. Actually, mm -hmm. I don't think I, he, I don't think, think he receives it. Either. His wife Ruth Fletcher Gage as well is a just a mastermind of, of criminal writing and like drama and right, thriller. Right. He, he wrote some so Law and Order episodes, something like that. Yes, right? she did. Right, so right, did right, he. Right. And, and they're they're both working on uh, a lot of stuff, and they're always very yeah. busy. Christos is currently writing Spider Island for Marvel. Oh, uh, right. Secret oh, Wars. Yeah. The Spider awesome. Island series is great. It's great, and he's, you know, largely in part Don't credit to him. Spider-Verse, but Spider Island's off Spider the hook. Island, yeah. And he's doing Buffy, the continuation of Buffy. He's been doing it for right, some right, time. Right. And he did Angel and Faith, which was like, fans loved that over Buffy at the time, actually. Exactly. Anyway, I want to give a shout out to those two. I'll be um, joining them in Long Beach, California, September 12th and 13th for the Long Beach Comic Con. Uh, we're hoping to do a panel out there and, and whatnot, but... They're, I just wanted to give them a shout because their their episode nine of Daredevil was nominated for two Emmys, uh, visual effects and sound editing. And that episode, you know, they wrote that. That's their and that's. 
been claimed as one of the best uh, episodes, if not the best episode of the season. So shout out to those two. They're absolutely wonderful. Uh, I could shout out a bunch of people that are involved. In <laughs> Feel show. free. Uh, mm-hmm. Who else? EJ. EJ Scott. Unsung hero. Think of this like your Emmy speech. <laughs> like, don't forget nobody. Well, EJ Scott actually, uh, the funny thing about EJ, I mentioned him earlier, uh, Deborah Anwell's beau uh, of a number of years. Uh, he actually has, I want to say it right, cloideremia. It's a blindness disease that runs in your family. So he, in every sense of the word, is actually daredevil, uh, you know, in, in so many ways, because he's a really brave guy. He's actually going blind. No shit. It, that yes. sucks. How it old sucks. Is he? uh, He's around my age, his mid-30s, I, I believe, maybe early to mid-30s. Um, anyway, he raises uh, money for charities for this, and he is a marathon runner, and he runs in different countries. All, and he's going to run in seven continents and set in... Uh, Seven con- seven marathons each in a continent. I oh, believe is going to be. Before. Yeah, that's EJ's that's thing. That's epic. It's epic, all right. And anyway, One you can find him. One of those is obviously him. Antarctica. Yeah, it's it cold is. It there. Is. And yeah. You go to South America. Yes, and it, it's, Antarctica. It's, he was just approved for Antarctica. Uh, anyway, I'm a big supporter of him. He made a movie. It's on Vivo, I believe, but I'm not certain how to get to it. It's an awesome, like, half-hour documentary on him, mm-hmm. uh, produced by Deborah, and it's so wonderful. Anyway, he's the greatest guy. He's brave. He's raising money for that disease. It's very important, I think, and and he's such uh, such a hero. So, pioneer. Like his, slide, his sight is continually degenerating. Yeah, and he's still running. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, That's he wild. runs. He runs blindfolded. That's insane. <laughs> wow. Forget the vision he still has. I'm not kidding you. He runs blindfolded. So he, you know, he's a great dude. I think you should check what is out. That? What is the charity? Um, I can't quite remember the name of it right now. I should have come more prepared with that. But please, he's actually very active. He's got a seems podcast. Seems easily Googleable though. He's very Googleable. Is that a word? I, d- I yeah, made go- that word go- a Google. word like a couple of episodes ago. Yeah. So I'm just gonna run with it, run with and it. hopefully Webster's kind of picks it up after a while. You could be in for it a lot of money. It should be. Yeah. Uh, he has I mean, a, you heard EJ, it here uh, first. Guys. Is, he, is he Facebookable? Yes. EJ has uh, EJ Scott. He has a podcast called Scratch the Surface, and it's fantastic. It's available on your podcast app on iTunes. Uh, he's got the greatest guests. He's got Drew Goddard. He's got Stephen Knight, Charlie Cox, Deborah. He's got he's amazing on Twitter, guests. Announced all his charity on there, Lady Jolin. Awesome, Lady Jolin's all over it. She she's is. got she's it. Awesome. Covered. That's why she runs Tommy Cats. She also runs the Toby Leonard Moore fans. Or no, she does not run that one. But she's heavily affiliated with them, the S'mores. Yes, that's what they're called. Anyway. EJ's awesome. Look up his charity. I'm, I apologize for not being able to remember it, but it's it's related to that blind disease, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing right either. He got it. No, he flew away. I think I beat him up. He he definitely got hurt. I punched the mosquito in his face. I will punch every. Oh, it's in my in whiskey face. or scotch. All right, so I did kill him. Oh. Anyway, that's one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, so I'm glad I remembered. That, that's really cool. That's insane, man. Yeah, wow. it's the greatest. At the premiere of uh, Daredevil in Los Angeles, EJ showed up in a traditional Matt Murdock suit, like a gray suit mm-hmm. with the white shirt, but it was opened and he had the DD shirt underneath. Oh, nice. He had the red sunglasses. He had the stick. It was genius. Nice. That's really cool, it man. That, here's to you, man. Here's to EJ. Cheers. Best EJ, of luck Scott. running. And I mean, Antarctica, that's that's, that's some shit. That's some shit, isn't it? Yeah. He's there's there's no other way to describe that. You're going to run a marathon in Antarctica. Yeah. I mean, there, come on. I don't know about you guys, but I complain when I'm, you know, in Harlem in the cold, actually. So Antarctica might be another I problem. don't like when it's 50. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. a bitch in the cold. <laughs> yeah. I'm the first one to say it. Give me the heat of summer any day. Tank tops, me bikinis, too. short shorts, side boobs. I'm very thrilled <laughs> that the half shirt. You want some side boobs? If over, you like, I'll get you some side boobs. What's that John Carpenter movie thing or the it? thing? The thing, right, right. right. Yeah, great. So, like movie. when it gets cold enough, I'm like, I just want to be possessed by an alien thing and just not live this life anymore. <laughs> That's where I am at this point. So this guy, credit to him, man. Yeah, he's going for it. He's done it before. He's ran he's dozens of marathons and, and through various little, you know, as you when you run marathons, you get all these nagging injuries. I'm also a personal trainer, so I know all about this stuff too uh a bunch of nagging injuries things that come up shin splints ankle this hip that you know all he fights through all that stuff he gets the best shoes he can like he does all his research i mean it's just really cool to see someone who is uh 
with all pun and no pun intended all at the same time is like the man without fear. It's that's awesome. Insane. That's did, great. Did, did he do the Antarctica thing already or? No, that... he just recently got like, I, like whatever it's called, EJ. I guess you had to get like medical Co clearance Co for Some that. type of clearance. Like, can, we, can, we, can we raise money for this guy to get a tauntaun to like, you know, rip open and sleep in when it, you know, as a <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> first, you, first you might have to actually breed said tauntaun. What, what, what do we need? We need sheep? Well, what stands on two legs? Like monkeys? monkeys how, how can we get gorillas. this guy a Pete's Humans, Basement gorilla, cape gorilla. to wear is we what I want to know. I have one last question before we turn in and going back to, you know, just the, the Llamas. partying idea. Oh, Did you on. guys... There it is. Look, what do we got? The... What the Oh, wow. The Clotoremia Research uh, Foundation. That's great. Uh, it was that Jolyn? Thank you. It was. She's awesome. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, she's good, man. Wow. The Clotoremia. Re I'm, I don't think I'm Dude, saying it right. Awesome, man. She's. That's why we love you her. You did that's better right. than we would have done trying <laughs> yeah. to pronounce that yeah. word. But that's it. You could Google that in a second. It would come up. In fact, his name might come up because he's such a kind of like pioneer of the the research campaign for it. So, Tommy, if you were on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and you had a phone friend, if I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, I would have been one of the original hosts, and the mosquito just landed on my tricep. <laughs> it's ridiculous. This Regis just filmed it here live with everybody. Ramon, do you have anything to say? Ramon, Ramon. That's a great thing to say as Regis. The name Ramon is just a, Demetrius. That's a little bit harder. Pete, Hard. Pete, you can't understand. Pete, Matt, uh, our boy Jerick. Well, it says you're also a singer too. Now, if you were on Broadway, you must have sang a tune or two. Right, I, cabin, I can sing. sing Cabin in the Woods, man. You cabin remember? in the Woods. Ooh. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I remember that very well. Uh, it's a great song. Yeah, I, I was in a band called Sweet Fix. I don't know if any of them are listening in, but uh, we're all still buds. We, you know, but that ended in December 2014. What do you guys play? I was the lead singer, and we had a, an amazing rock pop band going there. Nice. So. Uh, Ivan, Bill, Marco, Jeff, I hope you're all doing great. Um, we have a great little legacy from New York. We rocked New York pretty hard, playing everything from Irving Plaza to the basement of, you know, National Underground and Arlene's oh, wow. Grocery. We've done it all. Nice. We got some good stuff on iTunes. I'm still really proud of it. Um, uh, anyway, I'm working on a couple things right now, a couple band projects, and hopefully one of them will come to fruition really soon. I've got That's good. many questions from people about, like, what is it? What's the band? And you know, I, I I want to debut it so badly, but it has to be great. Can't be good. It's got to be great. So is it the Daredevils. <laughs> no <laughs> God, <laughs> wouldn't that be just horribly no, be sad? Horrible. That'd be terrible. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm really hoping that it comes together soon and that decisions can be made and you know business can get started so we can start playing some gigs and getting stuff out there. But yeah, I've been a, like a rocker for years. Oh my god, does he have another attempt at a... Uh, no, that they, happened. They did, yeah, they yeah. did, uh, but... We're just... Hook up with Y-O-T-L? You have the locust. Oh, yeah! Our boy Pete Cheeseburger that comes oh, on the show... I love cheeseburger. Uh, <laughs> okay. He's in a band called Year of the Locust. They just got finished opening up for, uh, I think it was... Not Breaking Benjamin. What, who oh, was? No way, really? Uh, Uber like, Stank, yeah. they just got finished nice. opening up for They're actually better. really good. It's uh, <laughs> more of a hard rock kind yeah. of like, into Cedar and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. They're really good. That's well, awesome. We're like you guys uh, sweet fix collaborate, like collaborative effort. I'm sure he'd be more than happy to. Well, I'm a free agent right now. Uh, technically, mm. technically, I'm a free agent. On How paper. do you feel about cheeseburgers? I love them. There you it's go. all America, so baby. Well, basically, we uh, <laughs> during a Halloween episode, we turned this guy into cheeseburgers and ate him. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. And you know, kind of crazy stuff that happens on the basement show. <laughs> I do want to know though before we turn off. Uh, did you, after filming and everything, rap parties and stuff like that, did you guys get to party with the rest of the cast? And if so, who, who is the craziest drinker? Who is the wildest partier? <laughs> I, ha I have to that's know. That's a great question. I know it that's is. That's question. what I thought. Oh, wow. That's so good. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I can even answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um... I can say that in all professionalism that everybody got down together and, and had a great time. Uh, we all went bowling at Chelsea Piers. No for, shit. Yeah. Uh, all right, who was the best bowler? Me. Really? Yeah. Whoa, I was, no I don't, way. Yeah, no, no joke. I don't know what happened. I'm not what I'd consider like a bowler. But <laughs> I was free, strikes left and right. Like, Fuck yeah, dude. It was it was great. Turkeys and shit. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Right. But uh, you know, I cooled off. It was more like a you know streaky stuff. I wasn't yeah. like this consistent phenom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was killing it. Uh, Toby Leonard Moore is a great bowler. He actually, if I'm getting this right, he said that he won. He was a champion as like a high schooler, like a in in uh, Tasmania. 
Tasmanian bowling champion. And he tells me this after being I like, think they actually use Tasmanian devils for balls. Yeah, man. maybe. <laughs> right? They might use actual Tasmanian devils. He said that, uh, he said that after being a couple drink, drinks in. So he was being all home. He's like, I mean, I don't know like how I'm going to do in this round. But <laughs> I'm like, oh, sure. Come on, champion, you know. And uh, no, he still did really well. You could tell he had like skill and, and honed and all that stuff. But who else was good? You tapped you tap into something else, man. You tapped into like a sixth sense, man. You <laughs> tapped into like a radar sense on the yeah, bowling ball. Man. I did. I don't know what happened. But I think it was like more amplification because you have a room full of like amazing people all at once and you're celebrating. And you're just like, don't fuck this up. <laughs> yeah, like, Please be good. Please be awesome. <laughs> Uh, you were like Fred Savage the Wiz, man, <laughs> with bowling balls. Listen, yeah. just keep your power gloves off for her, okay? <laughs> yeah, so I've spent some time, you know, the thing is with this cast and the crew and everybody, um, from like the, the hairdresser, Pamela May, who went over to do uh, Jessica Jones, you know, like, oh, yeah. everybody from behind the scenes to in front of the scenes, like, the, they all got on so well, and everyone asks me the same question, you haven't yet, but I mean, it's a common question, it's like, alright, who's the dick? Who's the one that... Like, I was actually going to avoid that question. That's yeah. why I just wanted to know who was the party animal. Uh, it, well, that's... You, the just uninteresting right. answer is yeah. uh, the dick. I'm the dick. No, um, <laughs> nobody. And that's the, the funny thing is every director... We had various directors from you know Phil Abraham to Euros Lynn. We had a lot of directors. We had a lot of producers. Uh, they were the greatest production team, the greatest set of writers... Uh, we had people like Quesada and Loeb and you know Drew Goddard who originated the whole damn thing and Stephen Knight. I don't know if I could sing that guy's praises enough. Um, you know, if you know any of their history, Stephen and Drew had worked together in the past in the Buffy years and things like that. And uh, they all have kind of like this sixth sense. You know, they have like this wavelength that they're all on. They just know each other so well that when Drew had to go work on uh, what was Sinister Six at the time for Sony, uh, he had to oh, leave. No. Yeah, I mean, that's what happened at the time. Yeah, he yeah. had started the show, done the first two episodes, and then Stephen Denight took over as showrunner. Uh, now you've got Doug Petrie and Marco Ramirez who are just off the charts good. Uh, Marco's got a resume from Sons of Anarchy to this. To, I mean, he's just unbelievable. Wait, and just, who's in charge of the Aunt May spinoff again? That's not happening anymore. Oh, it's not happening anymore? Thankfully, that's not uh, happening. Damn it. Not that I wouldn't watch an Aunt May spinoff or anything <laughs> yeah, spinning no. off of Marissa Tomei. Yeah, Golden right on, oldie, right? man. Yeah, she's Marissa not Tomei old. She's Aunt May is gonna be great. We actually coined a new term on the Basement Show about two weeks ago when the casting was announced: an ALF, A I L F, which is What's an ant I'd like to fuck. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, With all due respect, though, she's <laughs> so ridiculously beautiful. Yeah, she is. Um, I only yeah. just said I, said, I, I hope an my ant. girlfriend is that hot at fifty, or I'm gonna have to kick her to the curb and go and get Marissa Tomei, a who seventy-five might be about year old. Marissa, yeah. Don't matter. Look at Helen Mirren and how beautiful she is, and that woman's in her 70s. Come on. Good grief. I know. Beautiful what, woman. It's insanity. What about what we just coined right now? An elf wadf. Wadf? <laughs> an, an ant Where? I'd like to fuck with all due respect, man. Uh, what? That's, that's, that's not bad, though. That's not bad. Like, bad but I think that's a minute, 45 that might seconds be. later, he's, 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 he's brings it out. No more scotch he's like for that man. <laughs> there is a more scotch. So left. says this guy. Uh, no, Tom, I, thanks for being on the program, you. man. Appreciate it very much. You guys are great. Thank you. Dude, thank you, uh, you're always here. So, And you, uh, I hope I survive. Guys, please go and donate to... Demetrius's Indiegogo campaign. Once again, that is Millennials. You are special. Dashes in between those words. Learns you some English language so you can figure out where the words end and begin so you can throw the dashes in the right place. Looking for a charity. <laughs> oh, EJ's charity, yes. uh, the Clotaremia Research Foundation. Uh, I'll be at the New Jersey Comic Expo in November, Rhode Island in early November, and going backwards, Long Beach Comic Con in September. We just might find you at Rhode Island then, sir. Okay. Lots of luck in season two. If you are in it, we don't know. We don't know anything. Uh, but hopefully we do see you There's again. a Marvel sniper over there with a red dot on my head right now. Absolutely. And, and if you guys want to play your luck, if you come to the Midtown Comics Square and Central Store, there's a chance you might run to all three of us at once. <laughs> Small chance, but... I'm usually just good for Wednesdays, because <laughs> like right after work, around the 6.30, 7 o'clock <laughs> mark, depending on how long it takes Fat Boy to walk down there. <laughs> Guys, thanks for tuning in. This has been the very first Pete's Basement live broadcast. I do want to remind you before we go that you guys have one more week to enter the Masses of the Universe contest. We got two art books, two art books to give away. 
We're not giving away that. <laughs> I, just wanted, I just wanted to point that out that this was in front of me the whole time, in front of Pete. I mean, come on. Who gives a shit it's a 2.0? It's freaking number one. It looks great. Stanley autographed. Stanley autographed it. So take that, Drew Believers. You know, like, too cool. <laughs> just wanted to say. Ha ha, I'm holding it. Look for some more pictures on Instagram of me getting hit by bricks, <laughs> of Tom here holding the Daredevil book. Uh, keep in touch for our Masters of the Universe contest. That's M-O-T-U contest, peachbasement.com forward slash. Uh, there's multiple ways to enter. You guys know the drill by now. You know we always do contests about once a month, and you know it's always cool shit. So get in on the contest, man. We like to give you guys stuff. Remember, there are two trivia questions. I will remind you of them right now. The first one is, what is the title of the very first episode of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe? <laughs> and two, in the episode, The Problem with Power, what does He-Man say to revert back to Prince Adam before he throws the sword into the bottomless abyss? Both of these answers are Googleable. I'm coining this fucking word, I promise you. <laughs> so, get on the interwebs, search the answers, throw the answers in, win the art book, and some extra free stuff, because that's what we, we like to give out free stuff. It is what it is. That's pretty cool. Uh, cuz, what size shirt are you? I'm gonna guess like an XL or so. No, I'm, I'm medium, man. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. But, I, but this thing might <laughs> shrink, you though. Just we, an act we, got, than we got a Pete's basement I'm shirt. I'm an XXL. Roger, if you wouldn't mind grabbing that shirt over on yonder table over there and tossing it right up. It's the one folded up in the corner yonder. That's the one. Yonder. Fling it. Not the first one. That's the. Yeah, now you got the right one. Toss that on over. <laughs> Okay. Cuz. <laughs> well, since you're a medium, and I know you do like to wear them tight, God bless you. <laughs> Here is your Pete's Basement All shirt. Right. Wear it in good health. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I wouldn't pop the motherfucker in the dryer if I was you, unless you want it to be a small. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair warning, Then man. it'll fit your beautiful wife, who you said is beautiful, and I'm sure she is. Good I've, for you, and I've, good I've for you. I've had fans confirm it, so I'm not delusional. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, she's the best. Good for you, she's brother. She's funnier than me. I thought I knew comedy. She got me beat. Anyway, sign up. Well, next time we'll have her on the program. Oh, she's very... <laughs> can't believe that No, nah, it's sealed. Sealed, man. <laughs> the scotch just all just over. Just a reaction. The beauty of it Better, is... Man. This is why these things get CGC'd, is because they're actually waterproof. They're airproof, man. You can bring it to space and nothing happens to it. Is that true? Uh, yeah, because they're you airproof. You actually could. That's they pretty, are completely cool. waterproof, <laughs> air. They're not totally waterproof, but as long as you don't get it they're into the cracks, you're not. Oh wow! Really? Oh but my god! Another I little my seal. bathtub running with my CGC. <laughs> great, my Grace Adventures number eighty, man. Oh no! Damn. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> the contest for the He-Man stuff ends then. Once again, congratulations to Vinny and Vicky. Hope you have a great wedding and many, many happy years together. Tom, thanks again, brother. Thank you. Always welcome. Thank you. See you later. That's a replacement. Yeah, I'll just buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs>